Um, yeah. So. <laughs> Hi. That's the book. Yes, that's the gallery from Dummy Fifth. Wow. And um, I cannot we'll wait to read. Yeah. So let me let me get your. What is your name and your occupation? My name is Journey Smollett, and I am an actor, yes. activist, um, mother. Lots of things, I guess. <laughs> yes. Uh, what do you identify as first? Um, a, a woman. Uh oh. Okay. Okay. That's a black right. woman. Yes. Woman of color. Yes. And so you, how many years have you, you've been in this business of television and film? Mm -hmm. Most of your life, if not all of your life. How many years is that? I've been behind the, no, in front of the camera, not behind. I've yeah. been in front of the camera since I was 10 months old. 10 months old. Because I, let me tell you, the first memory I have of seeing you on TV was you were Michelle Tanner's yeah. little friend. It's wild to me that people still remember Oh, that. I remember it. Because you had, you know what part of it is, is that it was representation. I mean, right. you, I, I was a little black girl, you were a little yeah. black girl. Right. Um, right. You know, I was older than you, or mm -hmm. I still am. Mm -hmm. uh, but you were, you know, you had this, um, ethnic, ethnicist, what's the word? Ethnicity. That's the word. Yep. You have that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, no, it was, and, and it's, on it's this very white show. Right. And um, the character was, was written as a little white girl. Um, and I don't know why they had me audition. I was four years old, mind you, you yeah. know. So um, for me, it, if I wasn't aware of the impact that I still to this day get people who come up to me and tell me similar stories about that of like how much that character meant to them but I I think it's what you said you hit on the nail and that um, representation matters and in art we've been so underrepresented underrepresented for so long and you kind of hang on to anything that you get, you know, mm -hmm. any drop that you're fed, you hang on to it. Mm -hmm. um, and seeing yourself reflected on screen is really important. I think we underestimate how important it is. And it is, and you've done like the debaters and all of these things that have that kind of feel to it. But before we even talk about that, it's, it's very meta. So I don't know how, if we'll be able to get into it, but how do you, how do you know that? How do you stay grounded in that way to understand how important representation is when from the moment you could speak, you had cameras in your faces, mm -hmm. you had, mm -hmm. that was an occupation that was bringing money into the family along yeah. with your brothers and sisters. Right. I guess that, that helped because it was a yeah. family affair. But how, did, how does that, how do you, did you, your parents just kind of really instill in you you know, have you reading? Have you understanding the current events? Listen, my, I have to, it all goes back to my mother. Mm -hmm. You know, my mother raised six kids and she is the strongest woman I know. Um, African-American woman from New Orleans, mm -hmm. born in Dallas in Texas. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. um, and when I tell you, look, we grew up poor. We grew up broke. Um, and we weren't really, I mean, yes, all my siblings worked at a point, but we weren't child stars, quote unquote. We weren't, you know, um, in every single thing. My mom was very selective and she'd rather, you know, just us kind of be broke instead of just kind of selling her children. She really wasn't about that. The way we started, the way we got into the business was because my older siblings used to watch the Cosby show mm -hmm. and saw the Huxville kids and wanted to be like the Huxville kids. And my mother kept saying no to them. Um, but then they had friends who were actually doing it in New York as well. Um, where were y'all live? Where were you we, I was born in New York, okay. Queens, Elmhurst. Okay. And um, so, you know, and every time she'd walk down the street, you know, not every time, but often she would get from casting directors or people saying, your kids are so cute. You got to put them in the business. You can make a lot of money. And at the time, my dad was working, I think, like two, three jobs. And um, she researched it as much as she could and got us an agent. And my older, three older siblings got in at first. And then I just, by chance, I was a baby, you know, it was literally like a, a photographer just asked her if she could put me in the shop one time when my older siblings were on set and I just fell in line, you know, it wasn't. Um, but yeah, I mean, I definitely grew up knowing the importance of earning a living, the importance of um, 
um, contributing to the whole pot. That's kind of the philosophy my mom had is like, it's one big pot. You take care of your family first, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, y you know, for me, yeah, I it, it was also though kind of a habit. I mean, a kind of a hobby, you know? It wasn't like a profession for me when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't like I grew up with a stage mom who was, you know, cracking the whip right. and pressuring well, that happens, me. happens, right? You, saw, you must have oh, seen something like I've that. Had, I, I saw it all the time. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a very tough industry to be in. And then to put your child in it yeah. is incredibly tough too, yeah. because it, it, it's very easy to make um, the dollar your slave. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've seen so many parents stop doing their job as a parent. And the first job that you were supposed to do as a parent is to protect your child. And I've seen so many parents stop protecting their children because the money was right. Yeah. And we hear those stories as outsiders, people mm -hmm. looking in, we hear the stories of, uh, and, and from the children themselves eventually. Mm -hmm. um, but it sounds like your parents had a plan of this is going to work until it, you know, it works a to a certain degree, but it's not us. It's not, doesn't define who we Absolutely. are. Absolutely. Absolutely. And there are a number of projects I could list off that my mother turned down or times I was offered so much money to do a TV show or something, mm -hmm. but would have been incredibly unhappy or would have been in an unsafe environment or something like that. Yeah. And, um, you know, I have to give her credit for that, mm -hmm. for making those hard choices. So that's also how you were able to stay um, grounded enough to understand that maybe not everybody had things sort of like, you know, someone's getting you, you know, drinks and getting you this and doing your makeup and doing this. Oh yeah. Other, other kids. Oh no, I still kids. was doing chores when yeah. I was coming home. I mean, honestly, from the time I was 11 years old, um, my parents separated and my, parents for some reason I was really good at math they decided um, after the separation that um, I would be the one to do the budgeting and the booking the bookkeeping page? at 11 what? I started doing <laughs> it for my whole family the, something has changed here. <laughs> I know You're I know keeping at 11 I I was I was the bookkeeper for for the family wow. from the time I was 11 on wow. and um, you know my older siblings were Jojo and ja Jojo was in college. Jazz was off like modeling, yeah. and Jussie sucked at math. So I was the next in line <laughs> to do it. That's amazing. And so um, you know, they taught me. I was talking to bill collectors mm -hmm. and creditors. I, I well, we, was, we had that in common. <laughs> yeah, yes. absolutely. So definitely from a young age, my mother taught me the importance of a dollar, sure. and I just learned how like wow, we, there's six people you know, six kids in this house, it takes a lot of money to Make it happen. run this household. And right now we, we have this amount to work with and what are we gonna do, you know? And yeah. and so um, I grew up with a, with a really unconventional um, outlook on capitalism, on earning a living, on appreciating the value of what you earn. Mm -hmm. Well then, Ooh, because there's, there's so much I want to get into there. <laughs> because now I get to see you in, in different lights. So I get to see you behind the scenes do making moves. Mm -hmm. So you are an actress. People know you from movies. They know your family. You're this this little movie that's coming out. This yeah, little independent thing. <laughs> thing that's coming out today. Yes. Birds of Prey. You are now officially a, a comic book. A hero or a villain, I don't know. On, on she, she's, she is for sure a reluctant hero, but okay. yes, yes. Okay, but I also get to see you making news behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. You're very savvy, mm -hmm. and you're working on different projects. What is that? Is that you kind of setting yourself and your family up for the rest of your lives? Or what, what's the thought process? It's a number of things. Um, yes, you know, for sure. Um, as a woman of color, this industry is is incredibly challenging to navigate um most times i mean even now you know i'm the scripts i'm reading most of them were to play the girlfriend or play the wife of the the male act actor right mm -hmm. and so they get to do all the fun you know they're centered and you're kind of like in their universe but it's their universe and it's maddening to me and it's um 
been something I've fought against my entire career. It's why I, my resume is not 50 pages long, even though I've been doing this for years. Um, there'll be years I don't work and years I do, just because um, there just hasn't been a, a crazy amount of stuff I've been passionate about. So now I find myself incredibly inspired by other women who I look to and see that are generating stuff, you know, and feel incredibly motivated to do that myself. You know, I think we're in a time in the industry where so many of us are, are st we've stopped asking for a seat at the table mm -hmm. and we're just deciding that we're gonna build our own damn table, mm -hmm. you know, um, and we have the resources to do it. We have the connections, we have the network. So why not do it? I mean, they're just not gonna tell our stories unless we tell them, yeah. you know, and I've been fortunate recently that past few years, the projects I've been working on, you know, Underground with Misha Green, um, who created that, a uh, brilliant woman of color, she, you know, then went on to do, I'm doing her latest project, Lovecraft Country, which comes out in this fall, which is gonna be bananas. Mm, what kind um, of movie is that? It's a TV show for oh, HBO show. that J.J. Abrams and Jordan Peele are producing. And it's based on a book by Matt Ruff. And it's a mixed genre of, um, you know, social thriller, sci-fi, set in 1955, Jim Crow America. Mm -hmm. And it's wild, and it's unlike anything that's ever been on television, it's gonna blow the roof off. What is that? Um, mm -hmm. It's supposed to come out this fall. She's wow. still editing it. We just wrapped um, right. a month ago, of shooting in Atlanta. So between that and then, you know, I'm incredibly spoiled right now. Birds of Prey, it's a, it's a film directed by a woman of color written by a woman of color. What's her the name? <laughs> Birds of Prey. The, the name oh, the, the name, director. Kathy Yen mm -hmm. um, is our director. Christina Hodgson is our writer. Margot Robbie, you know, produced it, mm -hmm. stars in it. Sue Kroll is another female producer on it. You know, it's, it's the first all girl gang action comic book movie that's R rated, wow. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and so coming off these projects, I'm just spoiled mm -hmm. and, and feel inspired to continue to be a part of the movement that is expanding the gaze. You know, for so long, we've told a very limited gaze in the narrative. We've told the heterosexual white male gaze, mm -hmm. you know, and I think so many of us are hungry to see the world reflected. Like you said in the beginning, you know, representation matters yeah. and the, the, the bounds of power is shifting and it's exciting. It's really exciting. Yeah, it's definitely why I started backstage. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's about doing what you're working on in just a different different lane. Uh, is there something, anything outside of acting and producing and, and working it within this industry that you've always wanted to do or would do? Um, so outside of this industry? Well, yeah. I mean, if you think of something that's in the industry, but I wouldn't have thought of. Well, I definitely want to be behind the camera. I definitely okay. eventually see myself directing and writing. Yeah. Um, and producing, you know, uh, building my own production company. Those are for sure things. You have to build for. those things yourself in order for them to happen. Or do, do those types of opportunities come to you? No, you got to build it. Yeah. You, um, I mean, I don't know about other people. I know I have to build yeah. it. So um, what, do you, what do you say to people who are listening, who are working that nine to five? or they're at a company and you know looking for thinking about a raise or getting you know an upgrade is it going to come to them you know sometimes i mean i don't i can't speak to the every person i can only speak to my experience things don't just come to me i i mean i work very hard and everything that you know i have been a part of yes it's a combination of a few things blessings for sure because mm -hmm. I can't take credit I, mm -hmm. you still got to leave room for God to walk in the room mm -hmm. but um you got I, I I've had to earn it you know um to this day I still have to earn it with with birds of prey they put me through it man Ooh. I mean when I tell you I the amount of auditions I had to go on for that project the screen test how'd you get it what was the thing that got it for well at first they wouldn't let me audition for it wow um, because i was shooting lovecraft i was shooting the pilot for lovecraft mm. and the time in which um the series was supposed to go was going to initially conflict with the shooting schedule of birds of prey and um 
the studio didn't want to take a chance on falling in love with yeah. anyone that wasn't available, Makes understandably. Sense. And so Misha Green, the creator of Lovecraft, one day was just talking to me and she said, aren't they um, auditioning for Harley's like girl gang action movie? And I said, yes, but you know, the studio doesn't want to let me audition for it because of Lovecraft, Misha. Yeah. And she said, when does it shoot? I told her. And she was like, um, there's a chance that I have to go and just write all of these scripts. That, and so we wouldn't, mm -hmm. we're probably going to push the schedule. Mm -hmm. um, it might conflict a little bit, but maybe there's something we can work mm -hmm. out. And she said, bitch, you should just go for it. <laughs> did she say that? I hope she did. Those were the words. So, she said, bitch, just go for it. Yes. Okay. Um, it's a t-shirt. Yes, bitch, go for it. <laughs> That's great. So that was, that was somebody amplifying and, and championing you absolutely that's that's the blessing of you know yes they're not leaving room for the surprise you know leaving room for the unexpected and i wasn't expecting the schedule to switch for lovecraft so my manager then went back to the casting director and told him the showrunner said you know she she could go for it so I put myself on tape. My brother put myself put me on tape mm -hmm. uh, in Chicago, and when we were shooting the pilot, and um, they liked it. I came back to LA, met with Kathy, read for her, got past her, then had to read with Margot and do a chemistry test. Mm -hmm. Got past that, and they said, um, "Okay, come and read for DC, and we're going to mix and match you with all the possible different actors for all the other characters." Sure, sure. I've heard this. For the, the way that was the way the office got put together. Yeah, not that these are any, similar in any way. Well, when you have such an ensemble, mm -hmm. the chemistry is really important. And so Margot was in the room, and she read with all the different actresses for every character, and they mixed and matched us. I ended up doing this one scene probably over thirty-two times, mm -hmm. is what I initially calculated, and left so exhausted. Left Warner Brothers just being like. Man, forget these people. Like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> like, this is ridiculous, you know. And but you then, don't feel that way now, DC. Hell no. <laughs> hell no. Today is the day this movie comes out yeah. officially uh -huh. all over the States. Yeah. What is today like for you? Like, just oh, what is man. the feeling so, like and what is the actual process like? So it's surreal. It's I definitely had a moment last night where, um, you know, I have decided not to read any other reviews. Mm -hmm. I just don't do that mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But my reps keep calling me being like, it's certified fresh at yeah, 90% yeah, yeah. or Rotten Tomatoes and reviews are amazing. Uh, and then yeah. I, so I, I was blown away by that. And then I did go online and checked my Twitter feed and just saw all the people who had seen like the midnight showings yeah. last night and just blown away by the response. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing when I, you know, I think there was a real, um, um, not, there wasn't that much enthusiasm when I was initially cast. Mm -hmm. I will say that there was a lot of skepticism mm -hmm. about, um, you know, this is such a beloved character. Mm -hmm. and, and so I was aware that um, I had to just work my butt off and do my research and read all the comics and understand what it is about Black Canary that people love so much. And she's been, she was written over 70 years ago. She's one of the most beloved, yeah. baddest, street fighter, you know, uh, superheroes in the DC universe. And so I, I had to get it right, you yeah. know? And I definitely was aware of the responsibility that I had um, to her mm -hmm. to deliver. And so now to see that people are seeing the film and they are loving Black Canary, mm -hmm. it's the best feeling. It's the best feeling. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah, and it's, I love that it's, um, at least it sounds to me that it's, it's dark, it's, um, it's um, daring. That it is, it's I bold. Like that. Cause I just figured out, I just figured out the whole Marvel thing. And I'm trying to understand, you know, so I'm, I'm like gonna understand the DC thing. Okay, and, you okay. know, If someone is on the fence, about going to see, and you can convince them just by your character alone. What what can you tell them is a, is a, is the reason? Someone who maybe doesn't even know DC like me, right? Why right. are they going to see this movie? Oh, listen, this movie. I mean, it's a fun ride. I mean, that's the thing. I I think it's so unexpected. It's loud. It's bold. It's audacious. It's um a different side of Gotham than what we've seen before. It's very colorful. It was very important for Kathy. Um, to, it was very important to Kathy and Margot and all of the filmmakers to make this a very colorful Gotham. And so it's reflected in the very 
inclusive casting. Mm. It's reflected in the cinematography. Um, you know, I, I think it's an exciting time for DC um, because we're t they pu they're pulling from all these classic characters and bringing them to screen for the first time. But also, you know, it's it's just good entertainment, man. You know, it's violent and vicious and um, it's it's funny, it's loud. Um, I, and yet there's also a real, there's real heart to it. You know, and that's one thing I love so much about Black Canary. Dinah Lance, she's all heart. And in the comics, that's what you love about her is she's got these real um, complex combinations of being incredibly vulnerable and leading with compassion for people, but being vicious mm. and being so fierce and being able to, you know, fight with the best of them. Mm. And um, it's one of the things I love so much about her. And when we meet her in the film, she isn't yet willing to own her power. And uh, she's very much so this reluctant hero. She's the most powerful person in the room because she's a metahuman. Oh, and okay. she's got this superpower that she's keeping secret. Uh oh, is that a spoiler? No, it's not. They show yes. the canary cry in the trailer. Oh. People know she does it. Well, that sounds interesting. <laughs> I think I might have to check that out. You got to check it out. Yeah. I think you'll have a lot of fun. And also, I think, you know, we just haven't seen a film like this before. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It looks so colorful and. I think of like cotton candy and yeah, it's, it's fun. Such beautiful spectacle. It is. It like it's a spectacle, and yeah. and and I think that's what audiences are responding to. You yeah. know, just in reading the feedback so far, it's a good time. Awesome. You know? awesome. It's a good time. Well, we're gonna wrap up, and I just want to give you a moment. If you, if there's anything you want to say to our audience that is mostly women of color, mm. um, mostly uh, in, in our age and and up and down, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of them, you know, reach out and speak to me just about resilience and mm -hmm. bouncing back and hope and all of that. And and I would imagine, you know, I've, I've heard you speak, so I know that you, 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 you talk on that. Some, is there anything that you want to make sure that they take with them? You know, listen, this has been a, a, a wild ride for me the past year plus and and it's been like crazy highs and crazy lows and I think that's just life you know um with Canary I mean professionally I've just had I mean honestly probably the greatest year of my life mm -hmm. um but you know it also comes with a lot of a lot of um challenges a lot of obstacles to overcome and you know in my trailer I had a, a stick it note <laughs> on the on the mirror that I would, re one of the things I would remind myself and uh, meditate on for a canary, and oddly enough applied to me too, it was, it's an Alice Walker quote. Mm -hmm. um, and she says, the most common way people give their power away is by thinking they don't have any. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's one of the struggles of Black Canary in the film is finding her voice and finding the strength to own her true self and not hide it. And I think one of the most important things we can do is just use our voice. Mm -hmm. Learn no, learn when to say no, learn when to say yes, learn when to say, you know what, tonight I just need to take a bath or I need to journal or I need to do something for me and take care of myself. Um, I think, you know, it's a constant lesson I'm learning and relearning and shifting mm -hmm. and um, having to apply and in my womanhood uh, feel that I have it I have it conquered in one minute and then the next feel I don't mm -hmm. um, but owning our power is the most valuable gift we can give to ourselves um, you know Shonda Rhyme says it to me all the time she you know and she, she says how frustrated she is all the time when she sees a woman not own her power yeah. you know we yeah. are so powerful as um, as a species yeah. and and oftentimes we do the work for the world. We do their work in oppressing ourselves um, just by yeah. thinking we don't have any power. We do that for them. We they don't do even have to lift them. a finger to they put us down. Have, I mean, truly, <laughs> yeah, you know, right. Right. Um, it's not the oppressor. I mean, it's our own silence. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we end up internalizing our very own oppression. And um, it's a constant struggle. And I honestly, I can speak to it as a woman of color, um, just not internalizing that oppression. The, the messages were sent through the media. The messages were sent 
um, we're trained at a very young age to just feel inferior. Mm. And, and the very fact that we have to um, have a standard, you know, this, this standard that we, work, we have to work against, um, it's, re- it's unfortunate, mm-hmm. but, it's, but, it, but it is the task we've been given. Mm-hmm. And it's in our DNA to, to um, overcome that. And so whatever I, I, you know, whenever I can, I, I try to ask myself, well, what did I do today to shrink myself? And how can I not do that again? Mm. Okay. That's where we leave it. Cause that's, that's food for thought for everybody. Thank you. No matter what your background is, that's food for thought. I agree. Yeah. Agree. All right. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for. Thank you for having me. You by on are your just phenomenal. I mean, Thank your you. story is so incredible. I can't wait to read your book. Ooh. It is about damn time. Okay. <laughs> it's our time. Yes. You know why? Because time is up. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> I want everybody else. That's it's my, about damn time. That's my commercial for it's about damn time. <laughs> like, <you're not> <laughs> Thank you for having right. me. Thank you so much. <laughs> bye. All right. Bye.